Uh, first of all, a very good morning to everybody. Uh, I see some people are yawning, it's okay. Uh, as Amantika slept late, I also slept late. Then there is Instagram and TikTok, it's okay. Yawns are welcome. Uh, questions are welcome, man. Okay, so we'll get rolling. Uh, we'll not make this very boring, we'll try to make it slightly uh, interactive, so to say. Here is a small agenda. Uh, we'll go through the introduction, a small icebreaker, understanding the why, uh, the player push model, and engineer's career path, vehicles, for growth, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, you'll get the slide for you. Um, First and foremost, a quick note about me. I'm a VP of Product and Technology at Prova. We dabble in test automation uh, primarily for Salesforce. Um, as Animesh mentioned, I'm a mom at office, a manager of managers, and a dad at home. Uh, maker, author, OSS contributor, international speaker sometimes, and you can find more boring stuff about me at the QR code or on my website. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Can the folks at the back hear me okay? Yeah, okay, then we'll screw the mic. Okay, moving on in life. Um, a quick Slido poll. If you can quickly join the Slido and enter your years of experience, I can make this very relevant to you and to this audience rather than droning about my own, you know, uh, Ramayan through the whole session. Uh, if we see some folks are in the top layer, we'll cater to that. If they are at the bottom layer, we'll cater to that. Or we can still do slides. We'll take a minute by my clock. Um, and we'll see some responses coming in. Many folks, um, as you can also see, around zero to two years. Um, numbers changing fast. Okay. 10 plus years. Me and the other 19, 18% people. Five to seven years. Okay, I think I should scroll this a little bit. Make it visible. 3%, seven to 10 years or so. Okay, still some people are voting in. We let them come. Okay. Okay. I think it is, the numbers are stabilized, so we can see that the majority of folks are uh, pretty new in the industry, zero to two years, thirty-five percent or so. Uh, so, <laughs> interestingly, my topic today is how to stay technical as an engineering leader. Uh, these folks uh, are going on that path, so please take it as an advice from somebody uh, who has lost his hair in the IT industry. Uh, and hopefully don't do the things, there's a slide around pitfalls, so don't fall in the pitfalls. Um, and hopefully this becomes that session which you will remember 10 years later and maybe you know send some good karma, good vibes around my way. Nadia Robin told me that thing one day, it hasn't been like. Right. Uh, the folks on 20%, 10 plus years, I hope you can relate with my journey. I was talking to a gentleman before the session. And they mentioned that somebody, uh, their guru or mentor mentioned to them of some things which I will try to cover in this session and that is why they are successful in life and are looking at Amazon, right? Lead squared, sorry, lead squared now, Amazon earlier. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, so before we go to the how to stay technical as an engineering leader, we'll answer the why, right? So see, there are two parts today. It is not a very generic slide. Uh, the first part is macroeconomic conditions. Uh, in the last one, two years, so post-COVID, things went really boom, and then they started going bust and all. So a lot of companies started flattening their orgs, uh, including the big ones, including the ones in uh, where we are speaking today, and including my own org, right? So it's not us, it's them. So that is point number one. So if you are growing in your engineering career, right, even the zero to two years folks, you have to stay technical. You cannot, um, you know, go to a coal mine and not get your hands dirty. And you cannot stay in the coal mine and have your face blackened. So that's the point number one. Second is team expectations. Um, you know, if you are uh, a tech lead, an engineering manager, or a manager of manager, and so on and so forth, people will expect code out of you. Uh, in written form, in verbal form, in technical forms, right? Even if you go to a board meeting, they'll expect some technical stuff out of you. So that is the team expectation. Also, not many of us would like reporting to uh, an engineering leader who is not technical themselves, right? Like I personally won't. Some people might for their charms, uh, but that doesn't work for a very long time, right? So that brings us to the third part, that the engineering manager role or the engineering leader career path is actually changing a lot. So when I joined the industry in 2009, uh, Accenture was my first org, and Accenture has this huge like outsourcing model. So what they used to do is like get people in, and the role of the engineering leader was to just manage the team for the offshoring uh, contract. <coughs> Then when you move to a product you realize that that is not the way of life. You have to contribute technically, right? So that is what I learned in my own startup journey. And then onwards, uh, the engineering leader career path is actually changing. 
uh, people don't want a lot of just people managers. They would want 60, 40, 70, 30, definitely not 90, 10 ratios. Right. So that is the why before we go to the how to stay technical. Okay. Uh, there are data references or theme references in footnotes. Uh, so the slide will be shared. Uh, a lot of this is not made up. It is either through experience or data. So you can validate it on your own end. And therefore, you know, after that why and that macroeconomic condition, this recently was observed this January. So there is this devil person Taylor who mentioned this on Twitter. So they are helping a friend job search and they are looking for an engineering director or so, close to 200 people company, manage several teams, oversee technical direction, go to team person at the time and help with company by strategy and recruit. So this is not just one tweet, this is interestingly, um, the summary of a lot of job openings even I have seen. Not applying for jobs, but I try to keep an eye, right? Uh, just a show of hands, how many of you, you know, would you do this role? Like, would you do it? Yes. 200, okay. Yeah? Not for 180 k exactly, <laughs> right? So that's the point, right? So, and I think there are uh, 278 likes and 155 comments on this, and Hacker News also had a similar theme stat. This theme has started in Series A, Series B funded startups and smaller orgs, uh, SMB businesses and all, wherein people want you to be hands on, but then also manage the team and hire people and go meet with the board and whatnot. So make a wise call for the zero to two years experience people. Hopefully, when you graduate to that level, uh, this is all settled down. Uh, if it doesn't and maybe Gen AI takes over, hopefully, we solve it via some other way. Okay, moving on. So okay, so this is a very varied graph, uh, not mine. Obviously, the source intended are the footnotes. Interestingly, the zero to two years and two to five, and five to seven, and so on, the career path or the tension of a software engineer's career is like multifaceted, and there are many traps over there, right? I'll not go through all of them, but as we can see, there are stars on some of them. When you go from a senior engineer to an engineering manager. Uh, to senior engineering manager, director of tech, VP of product and tech, sadly like me, there are some events and accidents which will happen on the way, right? So what would happen exactly is that as you grow in the ladder, from a software engineer to a tech lead, you would observe that the tech lead is expected to not only code, but they're also expected to give estimates, and then also give feedback twice a year on the people who report to them. And then whenever there's an issue, the manager is like, hey, hi, Robin, can you help me with this? And like, they are suddenly this customer facing guy, right? That is the point in life, five to seven, seven to 10 years experience, where this break starts happening, right? The break from your core to the non core, right? And you get into things like ARR and MRR and all the RRs, right? You can welcome that change, you cannot, you can hug it, you can hate it, it's up to you. But the point of this slide is that. On the x-axis, we see there are some soft skills which will grow as you grow in your career. And on the y-axis, there will be some hard skills which you can grow if you want, if you move in a certain direction. There is also this dilemma or the pendulum of being an architect versus a senior engineering manager. I have personally been through it. Sometimes when you go from one road to the other, you might have to shift down a little bit. So I went from being a general manager at a startup to being an LMTS at a big org, lead member of technical staff, junior architect guy, see the individual contributor, do it on your own person. And from there onwards, I had this choice. I had, I could move in the same vertical, being an architect, be more technical, that's the Y axis, L7, L8 levels in Amazon and Google's of the world. Or you can do a horizontal switch to a senior engineering manager role, where you try to dabble in both things. So again, it's a personal choice, but the stars or the yellow accidents are where people start diverging from their core. And interestingly, as I mentioned in the beginning, that is something you definitely should try to avoid as you go through your career. Um, even if Gen AI takes over our careers, somebody would have to build the Gen AI. So I hope it is people from this group. Okay, now moving to the solution domain a little bit, the tabs at the bottom. I thought this is Google's office, so we'll do Google Chrome as the theme. So until now we are exploring the problem domain, but let's start entering the solution domain, right? So we can undergo ways of understanding how to stay technical, but we'll go there, even before we go there, first you have to find your motivation. You can be that rat who's stuck in the trap, or you can be like this rat, uh, who does like bench press on the trap, right? <laughs> also, why I'm saying find your motivation is because based on your motivation only, you can decide how much technical you want to be.
you want to be that guy who codes every weekend you want to be like robin who codes once a quarter or codes on open source and other stupid things or does conferences and learns python on the saturday night or maybe that person who does peer reviews and what not right so the level of motivation is directly proportional to the level of technical skills that you would want in your career so you know take that long drive uh, with yourself with a better half uh, ask questions and what i've learned from my own experience is that whatever you loved doing as a child will define what you will love doing throughout your life if you loved building computers uh, if you loved breaking stuff apart if you are a hacker at heart you will love that as you grow up but if you lo- like talking to people or uh, maybe talking to people about uh, technical stuff or uh, maybe devrel is your way to go or maybe both i don't know so figure out right so that being said there are a few vehicles for tech growth right in your own career so first is, and foremost is all of our backlogs have these abundance of bugs uh, ui bugs functional bugs performance issue that customer issue whom nobody loves uh, and so on and so forth find that bug in the backlog find your you know passion no oh, i i want to make this button pink uh, maybe it will be rejected maybe the ux designer will shout but that's okay you can still make it pink it will make you happy it will make some customer happy second which i really like to do is code reviews so code reviews as in uh, don't just jump in and there is a pitfall slide ahead but code reviews once in a while for the important issues or maybe the issues which are important to you personally which you can relate to some people are front end guys uh, i'm not a front end guy so i can't identify many colors i see blue and purple as similar uh, i'm more of a back end guy but i can definitely tell like if the json will, re- will return an, an object or an array or something so I, that is something which i'll keep an eye upon so that's my forte participate or run hackathons if you are in 0 to 2 2 to 5 5 to 7 years gap participate in hackathons free swag uh, free photos hopefully you get a job offer from google if it is happening at this office uh if you are 7 to 10 10 plus run hackathons go talk to your vp of engineering hopefully they are good as me and they will approve the budget if they are not go talk to the cto cio the hackathons don't cost a lot the t-shirts might but we can cut down with the stickers and still have free pizza uh next is participate in on call and tickets right when i say participate a lot of people actually hate on calls like oh my god this customer is shouting and crying oh my god oh my god already my wife is shouting and crying and now this customer is also shouting and crying. oh my god so don't do that you can also participate as a shadow resource that okay i'll come in i'll listen to what's happening right maybe i have that insight maybe i don't have it so there are two options in life around on calls option 1 your manager pulls you in then you have to join anyway option 2 you raise your hand and say i would love to help the on call i am busy but i will try right then then if it like if you don't like that thing i i was too busy as i told you so i will not be able to support right so option 1 you get pulled option 2 you jump in but long story short this is a vehicle for tech growth only when you relate to the customer issues at the floor or at the core is when you can contribute meaningfully to the project business that is where the real value happens that customer is the one paying for your salary not your ceo not your company that customer who bought that $10000 license for one user right so you are literally meeting um the annapurna as we say in hindi right so that's a chance you can take last but not the least build prototypes and internal tools so that is something which i also dabble in um so we have slack you might have ms like teams or something all of these are like bots and all so you could build a small bot you could build that you know um jira story point estimator these are very simple apis to integrate and it can you know keep your hand sharp at the end of it right so those are some vehicles for tech growth but the next one is my favorite open source as a vehicle for tech growth so that is the vehicle i have been riding in for most of my personal career there are three ways in which you can ride that vehicle you can use contribute or participate so use there is an open source alternative it's a link actually which has more than 500 alternatives to any commercial or paid product or tool out there so you can use that it will also help you cut down capex and opex uh, capital expenditure the money which you spend when you buy a software and opex this official expenditure like when you use aws credits or not right and third is it will also help you understand the when and the how of that open source technology contribute learn new skills and language so i think mantika or someone mentioned you can find out these open source repositories on git 
and you can look at tags or issues which are easy to pick and all. So you can do that. You can save the world with your tech chops, or maybe you know you commit that and it becomes that solar wind, or uh, uh, which was that Java dependency which had uh, security issues. It doesn't anybody log remember log4j. Log log so some gentleman <laughs> did that. So you can save the world or drown the world. It's up to you. Uh, it is a massive upgrade in skills and resume, and obviously good karma. The last is you can participate. If you can't use or contribute, you can still participate. You can attend conferences like this one. Uh, organize a local JSU, Python Easter conference or QA meetup, or support the GitHub issues and support queries, which is also something which I do. Uh, so I've been contributing to Selenium as my primary darling in open source world for a while. And interestingly, I've contributed on all these three fronts. Um, haven't got any money, as you can imagine, but definitely good karma uh, and some hair loss, as you can see. <laughs> okay, moving on. Specifically, Robin, how do we do it? Uh, very simple. See, what's not scheduled doesn't get done. That's my motto, right? You will pull in that random meeting and that design session or whatever. <coughs> so block slots on your own calendar. See, it's your calendar. You have the command and power over it, right? You shouldn't let others block stuff on it. So block time on your own calendar, maybe weekends, maybe some weekdays. And if you look closely, for month one, it has lesser blocks. And for month two, it has more blocks. Uh, it is just like going to the gym. So at one point of my life, I was uh, 125 kgs, triple XL or so. And then I decided, oh, okay, I want to lose weight. I went to the gym and picked up this barbell like that other dude and my back was out. So not the way to do gyms or staying technical in your career. Uh, do small chunks, right? Month one, do few. Month two, month two, do a few more. So on, so forth. Build up that muscle over years. I have been uh, participating, contributing, and using open source for, I think, seven, eight years now, or maybe since the inception of Selenium or so. Uh, obviously, if you look at a massive open source repo, you just can't you know, do that PR on that day one. You will feel like doing it, but you'll be like, oh my god, I'm lost. Oh shit, too massive, right? So build that muscle over time is the idea over there. Uh, pitfalls to avoid for the senior folks, or maybe the junior folks as well. Uh, don't pick that shiny picture at the top of the backlog just to stay technical. You don't want to become that guy who just blocks the whole queue and three people have PR your thing and they're like, oh my god, like, oh, what has Robin written? And but he's our boss also. And, oh, oh my god, it's dicey for you. It's dicey for them. Don't become the code police for God's sake. All of us hate them. Uh, all of us hate the micro managers. Um, sometimes you can be the micro manager. I tend to be that sometimes once in a quarter. But don't be that code police. So today we'll code review everything which comes through. Please don't do that. It pisses people off like anything. Don't under delegate stuff. Uh, a core skill for any technical leader is delegation. And one thing which can happen, at least which happened in my career, is that at one point I realized, oh, I have to be technical. So I stopped under. I'll only pick up and consume everything. Stop them. Slowed me. Uh, screwed up a few projects. Not a good place to be. Uh, resistance to change. So I come back from actually the mainframe days. I used to work with uh, JP Morgan Chase and Accenture. So in the beginning of this journey, I was like, oh, in my days, we used to do this. And then we moved to Monolithic and then AWS and whatnot. So don't be that guy. Don't be that uncle Scrooge in that meeting. Oh, in my days, we, you know, we had this backend server. Nobody gives a damn, right? So last and uh, not the least, now please don't lose sight of the business objective. As I mentioned, they are literally the people who are pay paying for your services. So just in your own journey or your own mission to be technical as you're growing, uh, don't lose sight of the business objective. Don't just inject dependencies and you know, Maven has this thing, you can just add XMLs and all. And suddenly you have this bloated Maven which takes, you, you know, Maven clean build only will take like, I don't know, 30 minutes. Just because you loved that open source repo and they gave you a sticker, please don't do that. It's bad for you. It's bad for them as well, okay? So those are, those are a few pitfalls to avoid. And that's about it. Thank you. If any questions, I can answer them. I got three chocolates, so I can give chocolates for questions as well. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, please. I'll get it. So many of the times, like uh, doing peer reviews of the PRs, so you know, uh, sometimes it's difficult to communicate to the other guy you know, what they have been doing, and I don't want to sound like my boss. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a very valid question. Um, all of us would have faced it. See, first of all, even if there's an unspoken hierarchy in the office, right? There is somebody senior and junior and whatnot. It's okay. And also, when somebody raises a PR or something, they understand that I will get some comments back. So think of that, you know, text box in in Bitbucket or whatever tool you're using as Slack or WhatsApp, right? And be chill about it. Hey, dude, in A equal to one is not cool, <laughs> right? You can take that route if that's your vibe. If it's not, that's cool, right? You can also say that as per this, you know, Java coding standard by Google, this is not welcome. Thank you. You can be the total formal guy. Or you can just keep it very simple. Let's catch up. I don't think this is cool, right? And then go talk to them about it. Or you can do all three. Option A, option B, and let's catch up. Because I think PRs have sadly become this thing that they have become a text box. But it's more of a collaboration tool. Right. So do all three, do some, that's a plea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please, gentlemen. Um, I'll also try to, as promised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not asking much of this. So things like technicals, uh, like you said, I feel like my journey is similar to that one. I'm more of technical. Now, in the offices, they want you to do the more of people management. I'm not good at that one. Yeah, I said it clearly. But they want it that more, want to more technical. Then how do you resolve that conflict? That yeah. See, I think that's one, uh, first of all, that's a very valid question, right? In some businesses who are growing or at the teething stage, uh, or they are ramping up teams, they would want good engineers to become good managers. But it doesn't happen overnight, right? So one is setting clear expectations you know, to your supervisor, to your team, or to your boss in simple words, that this is what I want to do in life. I want to be an L7 architect or something via this path. I am cool with 70-30 ratio, very upfront. 70% technical, 30% non-technical. I can do 40 on some quarters, but 50-50 is not cool, right? So one is clear expectations. Two. Also, a lot of people just get afraid. Oh my God, I'm being pulled in this like tar pit of management. Oh, will I lose my technical skills? Oh, right. I also have that fear. Uh, come over that fear and figure out you want to be the technical CTO, the CEO, or whatever, right? And then align your journey around it. So in summary, two points, sir. One is um, first, find your end goal. And then two, based on that path, chart your journey and then have clear expectations. That is okay yeah. because it's come with the subsequent questions that yeah. I have my own journey also. I don't because more management means more indulge into their systems. Indulge. I don't want to that one. <laughs> yeah. So, so how that is it means how to do, resolve that one because I want to do my own. Yeah. And I want to keep that one also. Keep but on. But, oh, okay. I see. There's a <laughs> desire for two like yeah, motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. I want to have a Yamaha and a Suzuki. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes that. That create confusion. That whether yeah. should be clear uh, because people say that more management you have because when I do manage, yeah. I have to think about people. Around, exactly. Right. I don't think about the code, and I love to think about the code as a personal. Yeah. So I am doing that things also. So that things again blur the my blur the lines. My, my aim also. Yeah, yeah. See these, um, you know, how do I put it? These maidens of voyage, or you know, um, these mermaids in the sea will come and go. <laughs> you don't have to distract from your path. Um, and interestingly, in these, you know, uh, vulnerable and uncertain times where there's chat GPT and OpenAI starts the coding and, you know, suddenly there is this new macroeconomic funding winter is there and whatnot is happening, right? Stay clear on your path because see, that is the end goal. Your career will last for the next, I don't know, 20, 50 years. These conditions will only last for like two, three years. Also, all employers, including mine, are employers. Uh, you are not a CEO, right? So you would have to stay true to your course and figure out I want to contribute technically once a week, once a quarter, once a month, once in six months, or maybe, you know, be part of discussions and decisions, but not like code hands on. So also love of code doesn't mean that, you know, we see an ID every day and day and, you know, when I'm brushing my teeth in the mirror, there's VS code running. So um, please figure out that end path and then you can chart your journey. And be very certain because these things will come and go. Yeah, 100%. I have one for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So the thing salary is, is the answer to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. But other than that. So, but other than that, uh, the thing is that uh, I have seen a trend in my current startup and like uh, other places as well. In my friends, that in as you go up the hierarchy, yeah, uh, at the same uh, level in the hierarchy, individual contributors are like often less appreciated than uh, managers at the same level, just because of the fact that, that I believe is quite true. Because they are more customer facing as well, and they bring the underpunna as well. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you get uh, like get into a culture or identify a culture or create a culture where they are kind of like not too much apart in terms of appreciation? Yeah. Okay. I think there are first of all two parts to that question, and also just you know striking my line, salary is not the answer. So. <laughs> Coming to the main topic, I think that is very true. But then also some companies, interesting like Google, has people like Jeff Dean. I'm not sure how many of us know about Jeff Dean and all. So it's not like architects are never appreciated. Maybe they are not appreciated in those circles of you know visibility and customer-facing teams and all. Uh, I personally know of very awesome architects uh, who are appreciated in the open source circle. So for example, Simon Stewart is a person who invented WebDriver. Uh, for Selenium, and is still very much respected in that community. So, to your point, I think it also depends on you know that person's innate desire that they want to be appreciated in that, then they should go join it on call, so that they get a visibility. So basically, it's like choosing your own self. Exactly, you have to choose your own ship, uh, not have legs in both the ship. Uh, hopefully, one. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, team. Thank you.